Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I like to collect houseplants, care for them really well in my home and propagate them and then share that experience with you here on YouTube. So if you're into that kind of videos, please do consider subscribing to my channel and send this video a like. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the Philodendron atabapoense. Uh, there's probably a lot more ways to pronounce it, but that's how I'm gonna do it. So bear with me. Uh, this philodendron is actually really beautiful. At first when you look at it, it's just like a green leaf. However, when you look behind it, it's got this beautiful deep maroon red back. And uh, this philodendron is actually trying to find a pole to climb on. It's gotten out of control in size and in growth that I actually am going to propagate this into like a lot of pieces today and show you that process. I really do need to give this guy a moss pole like a year ago. <laughs> because it's definitely vining all over the place and it's trying to grab other plants and as you can see here there's already, already a lot of aerial roots here which means that the, this propagation is actually going to be a very easy one and many philodendrons with the similar type of growth pattern propagate the same weight as well so uh, really quickly the care for this plant is very very simple it can take anywhere from medium light to some direct sunlight it hasn't really burnt up for me when i gave it like one to two hours of direct sunlight it's shaded by other plants above it but it does get a little bit of direct sunlight so far none of them has burnt uh, if you give it medium light however keep in mind that the uh, internodes are going to be very long the petioles are going to be very long as it's trying to stretch towards uh, more light this plant hasn't grown bigger leaves only because it hasn't been given a moss pole to climb onto so it's just been clamoring sideways so i feel that after i propagate it and give it a moss pole and maybe wait another year it's going to give me bigger leaves and i've actually seen baby leaves of these like super tiny ones and they're so cute i can't wait for mine to give me these those baby leaves when i propagate them so i digress in terms of watering it's the same with all philodendrons. You want to let them dry out between waterings. It's very similar to monsteras. They cannot be standing in water. And I do give it my aeroid potting mix, which is chunky and it likes to grip into the potting mix and it dries really relatively fast. I do water this guy every day because it's in terracotta pot and it's got very, very chunky potting mix in there. So it's bone dry by the next day, especially if it's sunny outside. I haven't had any pest pressures, although this plant has been putting out a lot of extra floral nectaries. And these are these little spots on the uh, petioles and on the leaves that will attract ants to come to the plant and the ants will actually fiercely guard the plant from pests. So this is a defense mechanism that a lot of philodendrons have developed, uh, a symbiotic relationship if you will, with ants so that they will be protected. And I think one of the reasons they do this is probably because they are stressed in the first place. There must be some kind of pest pressures for them to release this kind of defense mechanism because sugar actually takes energy to produce and they're sacrificing that sugar for the ants. I actually fertilize this the same way with all my other house plants. I keep repeating this. I use slow release, I use worm casting and I do chemical fertilizer, all very, very diluted. And all my plants seem to be happy with this arrangement. So without further ado, I'm just gonna bring you to the propagation table. I'm gonna get started with the propagation. All right, so here's our plant and I'm gonna get started. I'm just gonna cut away. So this is the um, apical bud, or in Indonesia we call it pucuk. And this, this is where the growing tip is. As you can see, this is already a beautiful aerial root here. And there's another aerial root over here. So yeah, I'm just gonna... I can't, I haven't decided yet. Hang on, am I gonna do this in water? I may actually, because, hang on. These roots are really underdeveloped. So if I put it into potting mix directly, this new leaf may not uh, unfur unfurl properly. There's an ant here trying to... I don't know if you can see this, it's, trying to, it's feeding on the extra floral nectaries, on the sugar on the, of the plant. How cute. Um, yeah, so let me figure out what to do with this top cutting because it is a little bit confusing still. The safest option would actually be water because this will allow moisture into the leaves and the roots will develop. So I may just do that. Mm, however, this shape is just so weird. I don't know how, how I'm going to find a vessel that will house this shape uh, for the aerial root. And I don't want to break it too. So I have to be careful. I'm gonna keep cutting away. Okay, so here's my other cut. And again, with all my uh, aeroid anatomy, it's very similar, whether it's a monstera, philodendron. So the anatomy of this cutting is that the leaf's gonna photosynthesize, gonna send energy down to the roots. 
going to develop more roots but it, at the same time it's going to give you a new plantlet here a new branch so as this come out it will give you a new branch and then this leaf will slowly die off this is basically just for uh, fishing in indonesia we call it pancingan which <laughs> which means to lure so this is just to lure the tiny bud from coming out so don't worry some of you guys are dming me like Oh, you know, my, my, my leaf is dying. Well, of course it's dying. It's pushing out all the, the last remaining energy to push out this little baby here. And what happens if you knock this baby off is that this cutting is just going to die. It won't take off anymore. So yeah, you want to plant it as, as best as you can with this side upwards because this is where the new buds are coming. Of course, it can feel gravity. It can find its way up as well. So don't worry too much about it. I've actually been overwatering a lot of my cuttings lately. So I have to really back off with my watering. I may not even water my potting mix uh, because it's rainy season, the humidity is crazy. I just need it to be humid in the potting mix. I don't need it to be wet or soggy. So yeah, oh, it smells really, it smells like black pepper here. <laughs> Smell of fresh cuttings. I love it. going really 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 greedy here of course if you haven't seen my propagation videos I go to town and I don't see any aerial root with this particular leaf so I'm just gonna leave it like this I guess and uh, while I'm at it I probably should unpot this and give it a moss pole but you know what I'm just gonna jam this in <laughs> I probably will break roots doing it but uh, oh well <laughs> Yeah, so this is done. Uh, the paraplan is ready. Okay, so I'm back. I did finally decide to use sphagnum moss for this one because I found some cups and I wanted to see some root porn basically. I love watching them through this clear uh, glass. Not glass, or plastic cup. It's one way to reuse our plastic too. With sphagnum moss, I have been overwatering some plants lately, so I'm going to be very careful about not really watering this plant. Actually, this moss is already pretty uh, damp to begin with, and I have a feeling I don't even need to water this for the next few days. It's going to create a lot of ambient humidity in there, allowing the roots to form. So I'm going to do one more in sphagnum moss. I'm just going to randomly choose one. Oh, this is looking really bad. Uh, this may have to go into water because this broke off as you can see here. So there's actually not a lot of roots. Yeah, this is still healthy. Uh, it hasn't rotted off or anything. It's just really short. So I'm going to put this in water. I believe this one maybe can go into sphagnum moss. You don't want to squeeze this too hard. You want to leave it a little bit airy inside. Not sponsored, by the way. It's just something I have lying around. Okay, so the rest, I'm just going to do uh, air ride potting. Okay. I wanted to have it a little bit out of the soil, potting mix I mean, so that the new growth point can breathe, can get out easily. Okay, so here's the family portrait. I'm the daddy, of course. <laughs> and this is the mama plant. 
This is the one that's going into water propagation. We've got two in sphagnum moss and four straight into potting mix. So I guess that brings us to eight plants now. Yes, eight. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in a few months. I'll show you an update on how these guys are doing. So it's been exactly two months. Welcome to this update. And I'm gonna go from left to right, I guess. So as you can see here, everybody made it. I see eight pots here. So let me start with this fella over here. <laughs> Everything's tangled up, hang on. You know, I'm gonna start with this one. So this one got burnt <laughs> by direct sunlight. So this is what burn marks look like. It was black at first and then it turned into this, but no worries because it's putting out some beautiful baby, baby leaves there. And I actually top dressed this with sphagnum moss. I think maybe because it was you can see the roots here because it was rooting like crazy it was throwing out a lot of aerial roots so i figured this is a better way for it to grow it's gonna want to root into things so i'm gonna have to move this into a moss pole after like maybe two more leaves but it's doing really well and the next one is this one the leaf looks fine but it is putting out another leaf here. There's a sheath happening here, it's not focusing. Yeah, they're actually super slow to propagate. Why is this camera focusing on something else? Now, let me tap this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these guys actually root and propagate very slowly. I'm really amazed. But then they have a very strong will to live, I must say. And here's another one. Very, very happy. And this is potted directly into my aerate potting mix and it's put out a tiny little growth point here. My camera's not focusing for some reason. I must be on her wrong setting. Yeah, this is cute. I love watching these tiny little, uh, what do you call this, growth points here. We call it tunas in Indonesian. And then this one is doing really well, so it's taking off with one leaf. And then this is actually the top cutting that we have. I actually moved it from its cup into this because the cup didn't have any drainage hole. And for this, you could see some root porn. Very nice. Some, something's wrong with my autofocus. This camera is not focusing. Yeah, this is doing really well. It's put out two leaf and it's got so much aerial root. Uh, actually, this, this would appreciate a uh, moss pole actually because it's trying to grip into something. So I may actually repot this into my aerate potting mix because it's ready and I'm gonna give this uh, what do you call it? I'm gonna tie this to a moss pole. I mean, yeah. This right here, this is not doing so well. I just saw this. This is the parent plant, by the way. There's so many ants congregating here. This is not good. I see holes in here too. They're really feeding into the nectars on this plant. And I have a feeling that maybe because there might be an ant colony living in here. And when this plant was really, really big, it's got enough sugar has got enough leaves to support all these ants and they have a symbiotic relationship by the way the ants are actually keeping pests away from this plant but now that i cut everything off and the ant colony is still growing in population there's just not enough plant material for them to feed on so they're all congregating right here and this is a problem so i may actually start to use some uh ant control which is i, I can't remember the name con ant that's a brand that i use so basically sprinkle some of them on the top of the soil here and then they will bring it back to their nest and it will poison everybody. The queen, the children, the men, the women, everybody. Uh, sorry, the queen is the only woman in the colony, but it will kill everybody. So I may have to do that. Sorry. And this is one that is grown in sphagnum moss and it's put out a very cute baby leaf. And these roots are just everywhere. I'm gonna show you the roots in here. Hang on. There, there's some roots happening. Very, very nice. And this I have to watch out for because there's water pooling in the bottom and that's not what you want. You want this to be dry and humid, not sopping wet. So I'm going to repot this into arid potting mix. I'm not going to show you, I guess, because there's so many videos of me repotting aeroids. I want to move on and talk about different things. <laughs> this one is the one that was propagated in water because it the root broke off. As you can see, it broke off right here, actually. And as you can see here, it put out branches of roots and there's another node appearing here and a whole set of roots this is also ready to go into aeroid potting mix very very happy looking cutting 
All right, folks, I'm gonna end this video. I'm so sorry you didn't get to see a lot of baby leaves. I was expecting to see some of the leaves unfurl, but we gotta move on. I will probably post these on Instagram when they're ready, but I'm looking forward to those tiny, tiny baby leaves. <laughs> I'm at Botanist on Instagram if you want to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations. I will try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye!